Western powers have criticized Russia's decision to halt a deal allowing Ukraine to export grain from ports in the Black Sea. The Kremlin says it's suspending the agreement in retaliation for a drone attack against its fleet moored off the coast of occupied Crimea. EU foreign policy chief Josep Borrell called on Russia to reverse its decision to help avoid a global food crisis. And U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken urged Moscow to stop weaponizing food. The U.N. brokered grain deal has seen more than 9 million tons of grain exported from Ukraine during the war and helped to bring down surging global food prices. For more, I'd like to bring in DW's Russia analyst Konstantin Egart in Vilnius, Lithuania. Konstantin, good to see you again. This deal was agreed in September to avert famine. Since then, we've seen ships carrying desperately needed grain. They've been able to get out of Ukraine. So what are the ramifications of Russia pulling out of this agreement now? Well, it depends now on whether Russia really wants to renegotiate this deal. And if yes, then on which conditions, what are going to be the conditions, because uh, otherwise it is going to be action replay of what we saw in spring with uh, lots of especially poorer countries saying they will like grain. It's actually going to be hunger or at least malnutrition in uh, dozens of countries. I think that, to my mind, Putin is using it deliberately, this incident, uh, this uh, attack or alleged attack on the Russian Black Sea fleet to return attention to himself and to turn away attention from uh, the uh, well, the losses he suffered and uh, uh, basically lack of success for his own army in Ukraine in the last weeks. Uh, mm. I think that also puts pressure on uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, the Turkish president, who actually helped to negotiate this deal in spring. And this may bring Turkey back into negotiations picture again. So in addition to aiming to shift attention, is there any indication that Russia is hoping to renegotiate this deal? Well, I think that it is in Putin's habit to impose new conditions when he sees it fit. And in such circumstances, once he stopped, uh, once he, again, basically, he hints at reinstating the blockade of the Ukrainian grain ships. I think he would want something more now from this deal. That's my suspicion, but it remains to be seen whether the negotiations will restart at all. Mm. And what about these allegations um, of the attack, uh, the drone attack? What do you make of them? Well, I think uh, some of uh, Volodymyr Zelensky's Ukrainian president's advisors already hinted on social media that it was an attack, obliquely, though. Uh, I think that it is a huge embarrassment for the Russian government because it already lost its flagship of the Black Sea Fleet, the Moskva cruiser, uh, early a few months ago. Now it seems, judging by at least some reports, unconfirmed reports, that uh, another uh, flagship, uh, the destroyer Admiral Makarov, was uh, badly hit in this incident, let's put it like that. Uh, I'm sh sure that uh, there is um, a very bad feeling about it in Moscow because it seems that the Black Sea Fleet of Russia cannot defend itself. And this, of course, provokes Putin into retaliating. And what he did, he reta retaliated by basically abrogating or at least suspending the grain deal. OK, thank you very much for that update. That's Konstantin Egert for us in Vilnius. I'm now joined by Walter Feitinger, a former brigadier general in the Austrian army, who's now president of the Vienna-based think tank, the Center for Strategic Analysis. Uh, welcome, sir. Again, Russia says the deal is off because of an attack on its Black Sea fleet. What more details do we have about this attack? Currently, we do not have many details about that because we know in war times it is not possible to have an investigation. So you have to rely on the information you get from the official media. And we know that we are in a propaganda war. So no more details at the moment. But I would say militarily seen, it is possible to exert such an attack. Well, as you surely know, without providing any evidence, Russia claims the British military helped the Ukrainians in the attack. How likely is that? That's a very important point because it, it is the same story because nobody can, can check it, so to speak. 
And in times of a propaganda war, it is very easy to blame the other side, to make them responsible for something that nobody can check again. So it is not very likely from my understanding, because what would be the strategic goal of that? I do not see any strategic sense in such a behavior. Russia is also accusing the British military for taking part in blowing up the Nord Stream pipelines in the Baltic Sea last month. What do you make of those claims? Mm -hmm. I would say, again, what could be the political aim, the strategic aim of that? And we have already a response from the military side, from the UK side, and an admiral said that the UK Navy is not even in, in a position to take such attacks. So they cannot do it. They cannot execute. As long as we have you here, we want to take advantage of your expertise and, and talk about what's going on in the battlefield. What is the state of fighting right now, as far as you know it, and what is likely ahead? It's an interesting point because we saw that the situation was changing nearly to the opposite, I would say, that we have seen in, in May or June this year. What do I mean by saying that? We mm. see that the Russian side is not really in a position to continue their attacks on the ground, so they have a double strategy nowadays. The first Part of it is to defend and to control the territory they have already conquered. And the second part is to put the rest of Ukraine under permanent pressure by sending them cruise missiles, rockets, and drones, and so on. So keep them away is the one part, and, and consolidate the territory you have already is the other part on the Russian side. On the Ukrainian side, I see a strong attempt to achieve more on the ground. So we have attacks in the north, in the east of Kharkiv, to Luhansk Oblast, and in the south of Kherson, because uh, the Russian side has a st still a strong bridgehead on the western, western part mm. of the Dnepro River, and that is what is under attack by Ukrainian side, and that is very important not to freeze the conflict from their understanding, but to gain momentum and to continue their attacks. Walter Freitzinger, the Center for Strategic Analysis in Vienna. Many thanks. Also a pleasure.